the clients felt comfortable coming in there knowing that they'd see an Aboriginal face and that they could talk to that person and not be judged on what they did or how they perform or that, that they'd be just judged on being a person. My name's Delphine Bamblatt. I've been working at, was working at the ALS for 10 years or more as the uh, receptionist. My duties there involved uh, typing, filing, client record um, to help the manager with the day-to-day -day running of the office. I spoke to clients on a regular basis for the solicitors when they were out, kept court dates, court records. I gave some advice to clients like what they had to do and what they had to bring to court, prepare themselves for court. Um, made appointments for them to see the solicitor and the field officer. Done. Agnes Coe was right. my um, office manager. Uh, I worked with Stephen Ingram, he was the field officer. Raina Pettit was the solicitor, was a principal solicitor there at our office. And a few other solicitors that came through from time to time when they rotated from Sydney. We were up at Arambi before moving down to the new premises on the Young Road. We were there for quite a while, and um, but being up at Arambi was the best best spot for us to be, in my own opinion, because um, the clients had free access to us because we were there in the community in the up there at, at Arambi, and um, the clients felt more comfortable coming up there speaking to us up there than they did down on the Young Road. They'd come in and have a cup of tea with you or something or a yarn just for the sake of coming in having a yarn with you. When we moved to Young Road it was just a bit too far for them to walk or they just didn't come in as much as they used to. My role was just to keep the office going when the office manager was out, when the solicitor was out, uh, to take all calls, to let the solicitors know if an emergency came in, I'd ring them and let them know that oh, they have to go to this place, see this client, go to this jail, see this one, go to the police, ring the police here, they have a client in custody, um, advise the clients not to speak until they spoke to the solicitor and that was virtually every day. I was, I was like <laughs> the one that they'd ring first because um, I had like the contact numbers for the solicitors if they didn't give out their numbers and, and the field officers <coughs> and I'd virtually know where they were all the time, well not virtually but I did know where they were all the time and where they'd be and actually how long they'd be out of the office, like sometimes they'd go for a week out um, just doing the courts and I wouldn't see them until probably late Friday they'd come home, if they came home during the week it wouldn't be until really late and I wouldn't be in the office and I'd have notes left and files stacked high <laughs> to do. <laughs> but um, other than that, I enjoyed my time at the legal service. I um, found it enjoyable. I found everyone nice to work with. I had a good working relationship with them. Um, head office in Sydney was easy to contact if I needed to have advice on a client or an incident that happened that I couldn't get in contact with the solicitor form. Always accessible, always easy to speak to. Our filing system wasn't on a computer back then. Um, the only things that we had on the computer back then were like letters that I'd type that I'd save into a client's file. And, but all our files were just paperback. Uh, I'd send down our top copy of our referrals to Sydney so they'd know what clients we'd have and if they needed anything I would just photocopy and send. If a client had a problem I'd be the brunt <laughs> of their problem if they came in and the solicitors wasn't there or the field officer wasn't there or the manager it would stop here. I loved it yeah it was really good um, like I was fairly young when I started and I just enjoyed it immensely. I had um, all my children when I was at the ALS. Never had a problem. I had a really good office manager. <laughs> she
she was really nice. <laughs> she helped me a lot, taught me a lot. And I've never, and I always thank her for that. Raina's excellent to work with. She's very flexible. She's nice. I've um, actually, the whole time I work with the legal service, I've never heard Raina raise her voice or get angry. She gets frustrated, like everybody does, but not to the point where she raises her voice. She was always approachable, easy to talk to, and a very good boss too. Well, that was my main thing, like Raina would say, um, this person has to go to court, but I want to try and get them into a rehab, get them into a halfway house, get them into drug and alcohol. Um, can you arrange this before we actually get to court? And I'd do that. I'd ring up and say, look, I need a placement for so-and-so. Um, they have this problem, they need this help. What can you offer me? Can you offer me a placement? If they say yes, I would book them in and I'd let Raina know, and then when they go to court, Raina would say, well, I have this placement for this person, and can we do it through that avenue rather than go through the court system, through the jail, the client's willing to go to rehab, the client's willing to go to the halfway house, and we do it that way. Yes, a very, very strong sense that it wasn't just an, it was an Aboriginal organisation, and the clients felt comfortable coming in there knowing that they'd see an Aboriginal face and that they could talk to that person and not be judged on what they did or how they perform or that, that they'd be just judged on being a person. And that's the way I am. I like treat people at face value like when I meet you, if you're respectful to me, I'm respectful to you. And um, that's the way they are and just to see an Aboriginal face since, to greet you. You see the change on their face when they come in, they go, oh. Then when they come in and they see you, they go, oh, right, I'm, they're a bit more relaxed. And they start to talk a bit freely of what they need and what happened. Back then it was just a really good, strong community and um, everything was fine. When the community um, did anything, it involved everyone, and it was it was a good good feeling, good environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having Rona from the start, like she was there when I first went there, and she was there when I left, and she's still there, and it's just one constant face for the ALS, and the clients know Rona, and everybody knows Rona, and they you know like you can talk to her in and out of job. Out of the out of the workplace, which is good, and like she still sees me down the street now, and she asks us about the kids and how I am, and we have a yarn, and it's like still the same. <laughs> Agnes Coe was a driving force. Yes, yes, she's very much the driving force behind the ALS up here in Cowra. She's a very strong woman, and um, she like. She's approachable, she's talk, easy to talk to. She's just really, she's strong. She'll tell you what is and what isn't, and she'll let you know if you're doing the wrong thing, and on many occasions she has. <laughs> but no, she's very, very, very family, very, um, how would you say it, very strong towards Aboriginal issues and the Aboriginal people in the court systems. Stephen's my partner, so we had like, whatever he brought home from work, we'd discuss and if he felt really bad about something, well, we'd talk about it and try to discuss ways of dealing with it and helping that person and getting the best outcome for that person. Over the years you learn to separate it. When I leave the office, I try not to take the office with me home because at that time when I was working I had uh, four small children. So it was like once I left the office it was mummy hat on, kids around me, pick me up, pick me up. <laughs> so I had really no time until probably when the kids were in bed to think about my day at work.